What's up guys, Riley here back with another video and today is going to be a bit of a change of pace from normal. As you can tell, uh, we are not in Excel right now. We are actually in FM uh, 19 and that's because this is one of my favorite games to play as a hobby and, and really, lately I've kind of been committed to school and, and work a lot. So I kind of wanted to do something a little bit for fun, switch it up. Not that I don't have fun doing the Excel, uh, but you know what I mean. Um, anyway, so if you guys are looking for Excel videos and Excel videos only, I would probably click off this video because you're not going to get it within here. But I'm hoping that uh, I find some some people that enjoy watching FM or playing FM because uh, this is sort of something I, I kind of experimented with early on. I streamed it on Twitch a few times. Uh, it would have been, I don't even know, probably about two years ago at this point, a while ago anyways. And I haven't really gotten to it to, to do around to, to you know actually putting content out there since. So I really want to try doing it and see if it you know see if I enjoy it because it would be a, a nice little hobby for me I think at this point. Anyway, so let's get right into it here. And the concept for this series is going to be um, rebuilding the U.S. national team. Now, as you can tell, as of late, they just lost, it's kind of perfect that this happened too. They just lost to Canada, uh, two nothing, and it's sort of it's it's sort of symbolic of the directions in which those two. Uh, programs are going in the uh, Canadian national team with Af Alfonso Davies, especially uh, he tore tore up the U.S. the other day. But um, he is he's looking like a potential uh, world class player in the making. Um, and uh, the U.S. I mean they have you know they have talented players. Wesley McKinney, uh, Christian Pulisic, especially those two seem to be the future of the uh, of of the national team. Uh, but at the same time, the output has not been there. Christian Pulisic has kind of floundered a bit at Chelsea, which I was sort of expecting him to. So in all honesty, I'm not too surprised that this has happened. I actually kind of liked Greg Berhalter's vision coming into this project of his now. And I, I say projects, it's honestly the best word for it. Um, but I mean, I, I liked his vision going into it. I think he has a clear tactical uh, system in mind that he, he, he envisions the U.S. playing and executing. But I just don't think that, one, the execution has been there, and two... It's, it's worked all that well in general. And that's why I want to come down. This is this is exactly what I wanted to do with this series is, is kind of come down and see what I can do, like tactically uh, tinkering with some of the players' positions and, you know, finding some some underrated players as well to potentially give opportunities in the first team and kind of just revamping and recycling out everything that, that Greg Berhalter has done so far, basically, um, in, in this game anyways, everything that's installed in this game, because this, of course, is a year old at this point. Um but yeah, basically recycling this national team and seeing if I can find a, a, a right to balance and dynamic in these players and, and tactical system uh, to be successful. So I'll have to see whether I can do that or not. It's basically my sort of challenge. Uh, if you guys are interested in watching this at all, you know, feel free to tune in if you are. Otherwise, uh, yeah, just click off the video because unfortunately, yeah, like I said, this is not going to be Excel. As you can already tell from the first opening monologue there, it's definitely not going to be a, an ex a, a usual Excel tutorial. Um, but so looking at tactics right away, I'm going to wait. Um, I'm going to create my own style. I'm going to wait uh, to, to really worry about um, the actual individual formation uh, later on. Because I, I do have a way I like to play it. I do have a, a philosophy of uh, the, way, the, the way the game should, I mean, I don't say should be played, but I would basically enforce um, in terms of a team that if I was coaching, uh, which I have, co I have coached before, not a head coach, but uh, assistant coach at travel level. So uh, about U14s, I believe it was, so, you know, 13, 14 year olds. I uh, was an assistant coach for a team there. And then I've been involved with a professional team this past summer, which I'll talk more about too, as a data analyst, so not a coach. But coaching is something that I'm really deeply interested in. I, I take pretty seriously, seriously. And I think compared to uh, if you guys, if any of you guys are, you know, have, have watched, not religiously, but, you know, just in general, um, any um, FM YouTubers at all. I think that's something that would be different about me compared to them is, sure, they're a lot about the entertainment value. Not that I'm not about entertainment value, but at the same time, uh, my entertainment value is going to be derived from, I think, a more serious tactical take on FM. So uh, for those looking for, you know, more tactical discussions and stuff like that, um, and, and in-depth, I'd say, more like philosophical in-depth um, sort of discussions like that, I think that's this is this is sort of the... This is sort of the medium, I think, where you'll be able to find it. I like to think that anyways. I think that's probably the way I'll, I'll take take this, but who knows? I mean, just starting off here. So, yeah, so let's get right into it here. Uh, opening formation, I am probably going to start off with a 4-1-4-1, which is really just a 4-3-3. Um, in reality, formations, it doesn't really matter what you what you call them because they're fluid in game anyways. So, um, But I think that's probably what I'm going to start off with here. Um, I do like the, the the reason why I like playing the, the four three three so much is because it frees up. It basically allows you to um, 
to field a lot of playmakers at the same time, um, and also having fluidity and for example, attacking fullbacks as well is a big thing for me where I actually like to, generally I like to invert at least one fullback. Um, it just creates space um, going forward as well. And it also creates overloads in the middle of the field. Um, so for example, if you add another, if you throw in a fullback, almost making it a fourth midfielder in this sense, um, it's, it's really easy to break presses. So something that I'll potentially look to do. So we're going to start with the 4-1-4-1 DM wide, which is technically called in this game. And I'm not sure if there's actually, there it doesn't look like there's any, oh, there is a team already called up. So there is a team called up already. Um, so I will, uh, yeah, deal with that. Kind of uh, reveal what I have in mind for a general starting 11. First, I'm going to start with roles here. And this is just going to be simple stuff. This is going to be probably a bit more of an introduction um, video and I'm, I'm gonna ramble on a lot too because I just that's just what I like to do so obviously if it's not your style then <laughs> I, I mean I guess it's so, sort of unfortunate in this sense because I would probably just the best advice I could probably give you is just to click off honestly because like I said unfortunately right now I'm not really catering to catering too much to the uh, to the audience's needs it's sort of just my own personal uh, art, artistic uh, medium to you know I guess put uh, put out content so Eventually, though, I think eventually. So, anyways, looking at roles here, sweeper, keeper, attack, uh, definitely my preferred role for a keeper, and he's going to get very high up the field and involved in build up for sure, and also not hesitate to play uh, long counterattacking balls over the top to uh, to strikers slash wingers, whoever's in the position, and it, it generally creates a sort of a, an extra sense of attack where where you wouldn't have had it before, where it kind of, it kind of uh, basically gives a keeper, makes a keeper available as an option uh, to be involved in attacking play. And in all honesty, uh, in the modern game, really, you should be able to, you should be involving all 11 players in the attack because adding the keeper into attack gives you an extra player that would not have been there um, before. So a potential overload over the uh, opposition, because in reality, all soccer is, is, is trying to create overloads and exploiting space um, in terms of, uh, yeah, you know, you want to you want to control where the opposition um, where the opposition is when you have the ball, and you also then want to control uh, same idea, basically controlling where the opposition is and exploiting the space that they leave um, by or as a result of your control. So, anyways, wing back attack is probably what I'm going to go with. I'll, I'll probably look to find a potential option for a, an inverted. Um, wing back and I think the earliest option for me is probably going to be Fabian Johnson. Now Fabian Johnson, which is a good sign, preferred foot either so he, he can use both feet here. Uh, he is capable of playing winger but he has, he's a pretty balanced player overall. He sort of reminds me of what I was as a player obviously nowhere near as good as Fabian Johnson but I just played in high school but uh, sort of can play anywhere you put him um, so he'll, he'll probably adapt to, to wherever you play him. And in terms of vision, passing 10 and 10, not all that great. Uh, but at the same time, I think he is capable of playing an inverted role, um, preferably on the left, because I kind of I like DeAndre Yedlin, and in this game, anyways, on the right. So it would be support inverted wing back support. As you can see, stats aren't all that bad. Uh, positioning eight, it's a bit of a worry, but everything else is doable. And I mean, hopefully, we'll train him up. Unfortunately, the problem with the problem with the national team is that you don't get uh, too many trainings with them, so you can't actually train them to a new role all that quickly. But I think we're going to stick him there now, and he's going to be our inverted wing back for the time being. Um, and we'll create that, uh, definitely create that extra space within the, the midfield, or the, uh, sorry, the extra, give, give it extra man um, in the midfield here. And then what I like to do as well, halfback defend. So what's, what will happen in build up is that the two center, or the two center backs will split and then the halfback will drop down in between, kind of making a back three, uh, sort of what uh, Barcelona does. And actually, a lot of teams uh, will do. City, you'll see doing it for sure at times uh, with Rodrigo dropping in or for or Fernandinho from last season. Um, but uh, Or Busquets was was the one I was thinking of, or even like Philip Lam for for uh, for Bayern Munich under Pep Guardiola as well. Pep Guardiola is definitely one of his one of his uh, well one of the styles he's adapted. Because it's definitely not you know it's definitely not original to him. But just basically as an extra man buildup, then if we, have, if we have that inverted uh, fullback, then he'll slide in anyways. So we'll almost have a three-man midfield. And then I will keep the wingers posted wide um, to create, to, to, to hold that space uh, where you have to have two defend or you have to have two opposition defenders marking them. So it kind of opens up the middle a little bit by, by forcing them to uh, stay wider. Anyways, uh, so moving on to so halfback, and we have two ball-playing defenders. I actually probably want to go one ball-playing, one center. 
center defender. And uh, in terms of my familiarity with the roles and stuff, I, I'm, I mean, I'm still, I'm, I have my ideas and the ways that I, I sort of interpret the roles may be incorrect in terms of how they actually affect the game. So another thing to think about, another potential inverted fullback option actually um, is Tyler Adams. And he's probably the ideal one um, in all honesty, because he is uh, vision 11, passing 13, positioning 12. So much better overall uh, where Fabian Johnson's more of a limited winger. So I'm, I'm going to send, I'm going to, yeah, I'm just going to spend the first or the rest of this episode setting up the potential starting 11. Then by the next episode, uh, we are going to be at that friendly with uh, Paraguay. Uh, I'm actually going to take a look at the schedule first. So we're going to set up tactics and a, uh, let's see, it doesn't look like we have too many matches this season scheduled yet, but I think that'll change um, eventually. Anyways, so I'll set up, spend, spend the episode setting up, uh, and of course this is right after the 2018 World Cup, so um, bear with me. We're, we're going to have, so the, the idea is that I'm going to rebuild over the next four years and the 2022 World Cup will be the main stage of where we're going to hopefully perform well and if not then then maybe we'll keep it going to 2026 but who knows hopefully this hopefully this lasts more than one episode um anyway so we're going to spend the rest of the episode setting up the tactics like i said so uh, just based on the players available to me right now i'm not even really going to look at the i'll look at the pool later but sort of set up a base starting 11 um which you'll probably see the most of so i'm going to start tyler adams actually at uh, inverted wing back Michael Bradley is going to remain DM for now, a halfback role. He sort of suits that uh, pretty well, I think. So we're going to stick with that. Um, halfback defend, as you can see, pretty good stats. You know, 18 bravery, 17 aggression, but most importantly, 15 positioning, 15, 15 vision, 19 work rate, 16 tackling. So just overall, pretty solid defensive midfielder um, in terms of how he's rated in game, anyways. Then what I like to do is I like to do, I think um, it really depends on the opposition. So if we're playing a tougher opposition, um, I would prefer not to do this. Sorry, that was my my phone. But um, tougher opposition, I prefer not to do this. I'm actually going to sort that out now. I um, prefer not to do, do this and add in probably a ball-winning midfielder instead of a Mitsala. But we're going to add in Mitsala now. And he basically, it's it's a uh, in, in, it's an inside forward almost, but playing in the midfield. So uh, playing a little bit deeper, but uh, we'll definitely get advanced for sure. And then I also like to play an attacking midfield or an advanced playmaker and attack. Uh, so very, very attacking um, in the midfield. We don't really have a defensive option that's going to uh, solely focus on ball winning or whatever. But if we come up against better opposition, that's when I make that adjustment. But for sure, I definitely want to have a lot of possession, and that's that's the reason why I want to I want to have two playmakers in the midfield for sure. Uh, then you have the two wingers. You definitely want playmakers as well. Then you also have the striker. He's not uh, for my vision of a striker is not one that just solely gets on the end of chances. It's it's one that's going to be involved in breaking down that that back line, especially um, you know sliding between the lines linking up with wingers and, and the two, especially uh, attacking midfielders. Um, and I, I, I sort of envision this a similar style uh, to what uh, Pep Guardiola uses at City as well. And you have Aguero, who, who's, is, who's basically my ideal vision of a striker. Um, so uh, same idea there where you're going to have the David Silva and, and Kevin De Bruyne or Bernardo Silva and Kevin De Bruyne at, as the two midfielders. Definitely both attacking options um, for sure. So yeah, looking at uh, playing playmakers there, of course, we'll to, hopefully uh, Tyler Adams will eventually get used to his role, but it's going to take a while because obviously uh, we don't really get to train him that much. Um, so now let's, let's speed this up a little bit. So Zach Stephanie, yeah, definitely my preferred option at goalkeeper. He is the future of, I think he's the future U.S. keeper in my mind anyways. Anyway, so I think I'm considering, so what I'm considering doing though is actually playing Pulisic as a center mid. Now, um, let's see, Weston McKinney, I want to look at his stats first, but I think he's, his ideal role is going to be that Metzala role, and then Pulisic slides in an attacking, uh, or advanced play, playmaker, but yeah, as you can see, Weston McKinney, def and I agree, I, I sort of agree with the sentiment too, definitely more of a, a ball-winning midfielder slash box-to-box, -box where he's pretty aggressive, um, and he's, a, he's, he'll have a high work rate defensively as well too, so, uh, but I think he can be useful. He can still be useful going forward, I think. Though. So we will we will probably use him at that Metzala role for now, um, and uh, p potentially adjust the roles a little bit uh, too. But I, the pro the uh, the problem with the national team is that, or uh, you know, working with the national team, is that it's hard to train players 
And so he does fit this advanced playmaker in a, an attacking mid role better, Pulsic, I'm referring to you now, obviously. But uh, I think uh, for now, we may leave him at inverted or uh, inside forward and um, uh, and then uh, leave McKinney at Mitsala. So I think that's probably the plan for now. And what I like to do actually is stagger the uh, the winger. So, for example, let's say I'm playing one inside or inverted winger and wing back, sorry. Um, I, I post that winger wide, that same the same side winger wide, so then he can underlap. Um, and then the opposite side, if I if I have a regular wing back, then I post that winger more inside um, as an inside forward. So then that winger, so then the uh, addition, the outside uh, wing back, anyways, can can overlap that inside forward. Um, so Pulisic will will work fine there for now. And I think he's uh, he's right footed, but he's still. I want to check actually to see. Um, how strong he is so yeah fair, fairly strong in his left foot so still strong enough for in my opinion to to, to play on that right uh, inside forward role uh, but we will potentially switch it around in the future uh, now moving onwards here we we do need to find an attacking um, midfielder for now and we don't really have one <laughs> so that's why I'm kind of considering playing Pulisic in that role or potentially switching it switching around the roles a little bit um, for now, and maybe maybe going at this point, maybe a, we'll see if we can fit a box to box in there, um, and then move that one to it, move uh, McKinney to attack. Um, but yeah, at the same time, we are really lacking in center midfielders. Of course, Nagby is injured at this point in the game, so we don't have him and uh, Lee. Uh, Lee, uh, how do you, I can't remember how you pronounce his name. Nguyen, I think Nguyen, Lee Nguyen, something like that. Anyways, um, I'm not really, I don't really envision him. He has, he actually has great vision. So potentially for now, what we may do actually is um, I don't really like doing this. So um, we'll see. I think I think I'll probably put him here for now. Actually, um, Lee, I'll, I'll just call him Lee for now. Um, and uh, yeah, leave him at leave him at that attacking uh, or advanced playmaker uh, attack in the center mid midfielder role, just for now. Um, and then let's see, winger um, Fabian Johnson um, may be ideal as a more just a direct option. Um, from the wing uh, on that that left flank, he's not really going to beat you one v one. He's fast, but um, in terms of balance, like balance eleven dribbling, still twelve, so it's not terrible. But um, at the same time, and it is, is his trade is knocks ball past opponent, so he's not really going to try to beat you one v one in terms of dribbling. He's going to try to just basically outpace you, um, and that fits his style of play better. Um, but it doesn't really fit my system all that well because I mean. Ideally, I want I want both wingers to be able to have the option of taking it down, cutting down the line, beating your man with pace down the line, which Fabian Johnson is capable of doing. Uh, but unfortunately, he's not really capable of, of doing the other the other option of cutting back inside and uh, either playing you know playing balls into the, into the forward or or Pulisic, for example, or either either playmaker in the midfield or, or and being an option of cutting inside really. And he is he's good on his right foot as well, but I, I just think that uh, he's a bit limited. Um, in terms of that style of play, so eventually, I don't. I think he'll probably, we'll probably, uh, uh, eventually use him less and less in the national team. Um, now, center backs, I do want to use John Brooks at left, um, got ball playing defender. He is a left-footed guy as well, and he has a uh, 12 vision, 14 passing, so he fits the role pretty well. Uh, nine concentration isn't great, but uh, um, still some pretty call, some pretty solid, um, important, important attributes like uh, composure, 15. Um, and, and pace too. He's really, really fast. So good stuff there. That's probably what I'll go with for now there. And then just for the usual center back, um, I'm kind of caught in two minds between Matt Hedges and Matt Beasler. Um, I kind of want to use one that'll be more of an option towards the future. And Beasler is 31 overall. So I think Hedges is a few years younger than him. So potentially use him, although his his attributes aren't all that outstanding. Um, I want to, so I'll, I'll mess with those a little bit later. But I think I'll leave in Beasler for now, um, and and you know obviously it doesn't really matter. We don't have a, we don't have a friendly for 37 days, so this is kind of just like the pre preliminary first look at what an, a starting 11 under me as manager will look like. Um, and the striker for all for for all much I always okay. So Josie Altidore, I'm in two minds about. I've always given him a ton of basically crap about. His his uh his first touch for example has 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 honestly poor and a lot of times he gets played out of the game where he's just not very involved. He, his work rate's only 11, 
Um, so he doesn't press very highly, and pressing is going to be a huge, huge part of my game um, for sure. So I'm not sure how long he's going to last in there. And actually, Bobby Wood is probably going to be the immediate option right away at uh, just straight up pressing forward. But I love the role that he can play, and it actually might be complete. We'll see here. I'll leave him at pressing for now. But uh, I, I just love the, the potential role that Josie Altidore can play uh, because, one, he's very he, he's very strong and athletic. Um, on the ball, but at the same time too, he's he's still a th he's a threat in the air as well, and uh, he is capable of playing you know one twos and playing off people, um, in that complete forward role and a decent finisher as well. So overall, he's a solid player. But uh, yeah, there's just some such uh, situations and scenarios, of especially pressing, where I just it just bugs me watching him play. So. Here's the starting eleven that we're going to start off with, and this is 100% going to change. Lee Lee Newen's not going to um, stay in there. We're going to set his name to Lee. Yeah, that makes it easier for, uh, for for me. Not that it really matters. So there's Lee. Lee's uh, slotting in at uh, Advanced Playmaker right now. Um, and then we're also kind of just going to sift through and sort of I'll point out like who has a really a real chance of making my my team and not. And that's going to be it for this video. Um, tactically, I'll set up the tactics too. Actually, quickly, uh, it doesn't take long because I kind of have a, a a idea in mind already of what I want. Um, but ideally players like Jeff Cameron, for example, will be phased out. Um, Josie Altador will probably still play a role, so we'll slide him in there. Uh, Gias Giasi Zardes, I don't really have any plans for, so we're going to, we're going to leave him out, I think. Matt Hedges, a potential starting center back, so we'll slot him in. Um, and then Greg Garza, don't really have plans for at all, uh, so he's probably going to be left out. Um, I said Jeff Cameron already. Uh, Omar Gonzalez, it's already, he's only 29. It seems like he's so old. Um, just, I don't know why. Just, I mean, he, I guess he has a ton of big, uh, he's, he played for LA Galaxy for the longest time too. So I guess it sort of makes sense, but yeah, it just seems like he's, uh, crazy old. Um, I don't know why his vision should be better. He's, he actually is a solid passer. So we'll probably leave him in there, uh, as a potential center back option. Um, because he is still relatively young and I feel like you know, we have to be thinking four years out too. I want to be start. I want to be playing players that will be uh, potentially playing in four years, in whether it be Qatar, or uh, I know in this game a lot of the times it get moved to it gets moved to Australia. So I think Australia is probably where we'll end up playing um, in the 2022 World Cup. But yeah, I don't really have any plans in mind for for the likes of uh, Bill Hamid, Jeff Cameron, Greg Garza will probably be left off, Angie Asizardas, and then. The rest of these guys are still injured, and so we'll have to figure out those later. So I guess this is going to be the team for now. Uh, the most likely player to change in this team, I actually like um, Bobby Wood up front. Potentially will stay. Pulisic will definitely be in the team. McKinney, Bradley will will likely be there. Tyler Adams for sure. Um, John Brooks, Matt Beasler, probably not. Um, DeAndre Yedlin and then Zach Steffen will also stay. So the majority of these players, bar Beasler, Fabian Johnson, and Lee. Uh, will likely have a chance at making the team um, realistically, um, but then those three are probably going to be phased out. Now, what are we going to be looking at here in terms of tactics? We're going to start with positive. Um, attacking width, I like to go wide um, to create width. <laughs> I mean, wow, shocker. Like, what a what a concept right there. Um, and then for the approach play here, I do like to stagger. So I like to overlap right here and then underlap left with because as you can see here with Adams playing left back inverted, uh, we're going to have him underlap Fabian Johnson, who will stay wide and be that direct option. Or pull six going to be that more dynamic um, half space sort of player and a half space is uh, basically the region off shell. I'll point it out on the screen here. Uh, basically this region between like the, the edge of the, the edge of the half of the semicircle and the uh, end of the, uh, the end of the 18 yard box. I'll be playing a lot in those positions, getting on the ball, um, you know, creating chances slash shooting um, potentially. And he I might, I may eventually switch sides and move him over to the right or even move him to center midfielder. So we'll see lots of options for Pulisic. He is a very, he's a very um, dynamic player. Like I said, where he's, he's, got pace and acceleration to play as a direct winger, uh, but he's also very capable of um, playing as an inside forward slash attacking midfield. Like, see, he can create his chances for sure. So, um, yeah, something to look forward to um, is, yeah, the world end up playing Pulse again. Anyway, so positive here. We have wide. Um, passing to space, I'll probably just leave off for now. Whipped crosses is definitely my recommendation, um, especially when you don't really have that 
the best uh, you know but aerial threat in the box obviously if you're if you're playing with LA Galaxy and you have Zlatan Ibrahimovic you might want to go with floated or mixed um, but for me whipped crosses is definitely my my go-to actually probably low crosses would be the better option because I just I liked driven balls on the ground into the into the box and where it kind of gives you a chance of of one you know scoring off an own goal because you never know if you if you drive in a low cross it doesn't really matter who it hits as long as it goes in the net or on target it's, it's mostly the going in um Anyways, that's all, that's all we're going to work with for now for that. I'm not going to, I'll probably leave work into the box or work ball into the box on. I like to do that in friendlies just to sort of uh, get the players used to, you know, playing, um, uh, playing patient, um, especially in build up play and uh, chance creation. Um, play for set pieces, definitely not. Uh, passing directness will be, we'll, we'll do short for now and then we'll do lower tempo, tempo to start and then be more expressive for sure. I will. Put on and in transition, uh, definitely counter press, um, counter. So we're going to play very fast, counter attacking, high pressing, um, um, attacking wise at times. What we'll do, so we'll, it's it's kind of my 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 vision sort of is not one where it's it's rooted in two phases of play where you have. Um, defense, um, which is for me pressing, uh, actively trying to win the ball back, and then attack, which is counterattack. It's it's phases of play where if, I, if I'm building out of the back, I don't want to play the ball. I don't want to play very fast. Uh, for, if we're originating with our with our keeper, um, we want to uh, you know low percent. We, we we don't want to we don't want to turn the ball over in our own own half. So we definitely want to be um, we definitely want to be patient. Um, at the same time, then when we uh, have opportunities to counter, we definitely also want to counter. So for now, I'll probably actually leave that off just to, so we don't confuse them because that is kind of contradictory to the way that uh, I have set. I'm not really sure how much that actually affects um, the style, but I think overall it'll be it'll it'll uh, be learned more smoothly if I play slow to start. I um, emphasize slow um, build up. Um, anyways, goalkeeper distribution I'm definitely going to. Take short, oh, do, take short kicks and distribute to center backs, and then we are gonna we're gonna high press for sure. Um, we won't use offside trap for now, um, but we'll use tighter marking and present prevent short goalkeeper distribution. So that's that's the pressing style I'm gonna use for now. Uh, very high pressing uh, with the aim of of ideally ideally the, the best way to attack is to win the ball uh, to win the ball um, as high up the field as possible because then you have less basically less space and less uh, bodies you have to you have to progress the ball through to score so winning the ball uh, the, you know out, outside the 18 off a goal kick with you know with only their two two three four defenders back um, and potentially a shot right away is more ideal than having to start all the way back at the keeper and uh, risk turning the ball over yourself so that's uh, that's my attacking philosophy very very uh, uh, very original and by very original I mean definitely not original whatsoever. Um, but still definitely my preferred style of play. So that's going to be the tactics. That's going to be the preliminary starting 11, which will definitely have changed by the time I get back here. Yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if this is something you want to see more of, and I will bring uh, bring more episodes to you very soon. Uh, next episode realistically would be looking at the national pool and kind of pulling actually players in that I kind of envision being in the side because obviously uh, we have a, a substantial amount in here that I don't really have plans for at all. And then also getting to that friendly as well and uh, starting to, you know, experiment with the team and seeing how they play. So hopefully you guys, like I guess hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Leave some feedback, uh, whether you did slash didn't, whether you want to see more slash you don't want to see more. And I will be back very soon. Um, see you guys then.